the snap tight assembly system locks end channels to wall sheets without the need for tools or fasteners. To assemble each panel, the perimeter channels are secured to the top and bottom of each sheet. Gently tap the channel over the snap tight lugs and work your way along the sheet. Each channel should be fit to the center of each sheet. Simply tap the channel along until it's aligned. We're going to join our splice channels now. Basically, we're just joining a pair of channels together to make a longer one. There are three parts, a left channel, a right channel, and the joiner. Looking at the part numbers, you'll see that the left channel has the letter L and the right channel has the letter R at the end of the part number. There are also printed arrows pointing to the end of the channel that needs to be joined. The joiner, called a CSJ, needs to be put in the right way to match the channel. Make sure that you've got the long sides matched up. Place the CSJ centered on the end and press in as shown until you hear it click. Repeat this with the other side and then make sure that both halves are butted up against one another. Do this for the rest of the splice channels in the pack before beginning construction. Let's assemble our ridge beam. We'll need the left piece of the beam, 97BLR, the right piece, which in this case is another 97BLR, the joiner, which is a ZASP, and some wafer head tech screws. Flip the ridge beam pieces over and make sure you have the ends orientated as pictured. Slide the capping of one under the other and push together until the hat sections are flush. Place the zasps into the underside of the ridge beam. Make sure it's in the center of the ridge beam. Once the joiner is in, turn the beam back over. Get a tape and measure out 250mm from the center, marking every 50mm on the center of the ridge beam. Do this for both sides. Now we have our holes marked, use a 3mm drill bit to drill out the end mark and secure the ridge beam and joiner with a tech screw. Now that the joiner is held in, drill out the remaining holes and secure with six more of the wafer head tech screws. Let's do the rear panel assembly. To construct the rear panel, we'll need 154B channel, 181D channel, two 30A sheets, and one 31A sheet. Start by laying out your sheet so that the 30A sheets are on either side of the 31A sheet. Make sure the side of the 30A sheets, which has the holes on top, overlaps with the matching holes in the 31A sheet. Overlap these sheets by one rib and then secure with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 54B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. 
ensure that the short side of the channel goes to the outside of the panel. Take the 81D channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets. Use two 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the CSJ and channel together. Repeat this for the top channel, securing the CSJ and channel with two 10mm self-tapping screws. That completes our rear panel assembly. Let's do the roof panel assembly. To construct the roof panel we'll need 160B channel, 181C channel, two 87A lips and three 45A sheets. Lay out the three sheets, orientating them so there's a row of pre-punched holes at the bottom. Overlap the sheets by one rib, then secure using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Be sure to keep the top row of pre-punched holes free, as this will make it easier to go into the ridge beam later. Take the 60B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will need to face the outside of the panel. Take the 81C channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets using the snap type method. Fasten the channel and CSJ using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws into the center pre-punched holes. Take the 87A lip and place it on the side of the sheets. The lip will slide under the top and bottom channels. Fasten the lip to the sheet using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the other 87A lip and attach it to the opposite side of the sheets. Fasten using four more of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Once complete, repeat these steps to construct the other roof panel. Only proceed to the next step with one. Put the roof panel on its side and give yourself access to the underside of the roof. Take the ridge beam and slide it onto the 60B channel. The top of the ridge beam will face the outside of the sheet. Line up the pre-punched holes, then secure the ridge beam with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws.
That completes the roof panel assembly. Let's do the side panel assembly. We'll need one eighty one A channel, one eighty four R channel, one eighty four L channel, one fifteen A peak brace, one thirty six L sheet, one thirty eight L sheet, one thirty eight R sheet, and one thirty six R sheet. Lay out the sheets in the following order from left to right thirty six L, thirty eight L, thirty eight R, and then the thirty six R sheet. Make sure that the bottom of the sheets are sitting flush and overlapped by one rib. Once orientated, secure the sheets together using 12 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 81A channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets using the snap type method. Fasten two of the 10mm self tapping screws into the underside of the channel and into the CSJ. To get good access with the tin snips, remove the topmost screw between the sheets, trim the way as shown, and then put the screw back in. Take the 84R channel and attach it to the right sheets using the snap type method. Take the 84L channel and attach it to the top of the left sheets using the snap type method. Next we'll attach the 15A peak brace to the apex of the panel. Align it with the holes in the top of the two channels. Fasten using 6 of the 10mm self tapping screws. This completes our side panel. You'll need to repeat these steps for the other side panel, which is exactly the same. Time to start the front panel assembly. To construct the front panel, we'll need 189A jam, 189B jam, 190B jam, 154A channel, 154C channel, 179B channel, and two 32A sheets. Place the two 32A sheets so their narrow pans are in the center of the panel. Leave a gap the width of a sheet between them. This will become the doorway. Attach the 54A channel to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will face the outside of the shed. Make sure the corner hole in the sheet aligns with the outer center hole in the channel. Repeat this process for the other sheet. Make sure the corner hole of the sheet aligns with the outer center hole in the channel. Attach the 54C channel to the bottom of the sheets. The holes in the sheet and the channel will need to align the same as they did at the top.
take the 89A jam and slide it between the top and bottom channels. Once slotted in, make sure that it overlaps the sheet and the holes are aligned. Use four of the 10mm self tapping screws to secure the jam to the channels and the sheet. Secure the ends first and then do the centre holes. Take the 89B jam and repeat the process for the other side, sliding it between the channels and the sheet. Once slotted in, make sure that it overlaps the sheet and the holes are aligned. Use four of the 10mm self tapping screws to secure the jam to the channels and the sheet. Secure the ends first and then do the center holes. Place the 90B jam at the top of the doorway. The notches in the 90B jam will slide over the 89A and 89B jams. Make sure the holes are aligned and the jam is placed correctly. Then use two of the 10mm self tapping screws to fasten the jam to the channel. Using the 3mm drill bit, drill out the two holes in the center of the channel. Fasten the channel to the CSJ using two of the 10mm self tapping screws. Now at the bottom of the doorway, place the 79B channel into the 54C channel. Make sure the short side of the 79B channel is sitting to the outside and that the holes align. Fasten the channels together using two of the 10mm self tapping screws. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear out the centre hole in the 79B channel and then fasten using one of the 10mm self tapping screws. It's time to flip the sheet over. We recommend you get a friend to help you with this. We'll secure the jam at the top by screwing two of the 10mm self tapping screws into the corners. Take the 3mm drill bit and drill out the center holes in the channel. Secure the channel using two of the 10mm self tapping screws. Repeat the process for the bottom of the doorway using two of the 10mm self tapping screws. Use the 3mm drill bit to drill out the center holes in the channel. Fasten the channel using two of the 10mm self tapping screws. That will complete our front panel assembly. We'll construct our door panel next. To construct the door panel, we'll need one pad bolt, one door plate, 158A channel, 158B channel, 258C channels, 291A jams, and the B sheet. Start by orientating your sheet. We have ours orientated so the holes for the lock are on the left side of the screen. Take one of the 58C channels and attach it to the top of the panel using the snap type method. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, attaching it to the bottom of the sheet. Next, take the 58A channel, it's the one with the hinges. Attach it to the right side of the panel. For this channel, we'll need the long side of the channel facing outside. Slide it underneath the 58C channels at the top and bottom. You'll know you've got the channel in the right position if the hinges fold upwards.
Repeat this for the 58B channel. Remember to put the long side of the channel facing towards the outside. Now that the channels are on, secure the corners using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now that that's done, do the remaining holes in the channel using six more screws. Make sure they align with the holes in the sheet underneath it. Flip the panel over and use four more screws to secure the back of the channels. While our panel is turned over, we'll attach the door bracing. Take one of the 91A jams and align its holes with a diagonal row of holes in the sheet. Both ends of the jam will slide underneath the channels. Once aligned, use a screw at either end of the jam. Do this from the underside of the sheet. This will hold our jam in place so we can flip the sheet over and more easily do the rest of the screws. Repeat this process for the other jam, ensuring it's aligned with the diagonal row of punched holes. Now that the jams are held in place, flip the panel over again and use six screws to finish securing the jams to the sheet. Next, we'll need the door plate. Place it over the holes on the left side of the sheet. Once aligned, fasten using two screws into the holes furthest from the edge. Get the pad bolt and place on the door plate. Align the four holes and then fasten with four 10mm self-tapping screws. With our door panel complete, it's time to attach it to the front panel. Place the front panel so you have access to the holes for the hinges. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear the sheeting that sits behind these holes. Place the door panel over the front panel in the open position and unfold the hinges. Make sure that these align with the holes in the front panel. Once aligned, use a pop riveter to fasten the door hinges to the front panel. You'll need to use six pop rivets to secure the door. Test your door opens and closes smoothly. We've now finished our door panel and attached it to the front panel. Time for the final assembly. Stand up the rear panel or get a friend to help hold it. We'll start by attaching the right side panel. Slide the top and bottom channels of the right side panel into the notches in the rear panel channels. Once the pre-punched holes are aligned in the sheets, fasten the panel using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the left side panel. Make sure that the pre-punched holes in the sheeting align. Once aligned, fasten the panels together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws.
Next up is the front panel. You may need a friend to help hold it. Align the front panel with a left side panel, slotting the channels together and ensuring that the holes align. Once again, align the panels and then fasten with four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side panel, aligning the front holes. Fasten the two panels together using four more of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Take the roof panel that already has the ridge beam attached and place it over the shed. Make sure that the lips are hanging over the side walls. Use a 10mm self-tapping screw to secure the end hole of the lip to the wall. This will hold the roof on and give us a little wiggle room when attaching the other roof panel later. Repeat this for the lip on the other side, securing the first hole with one of the 10mm self-tapping screws. On the inside of the shed, secure the ridge beam to the peak brace with a 10mm self-tapping screw. Screw the other end of the ridge beam to the other peak brace with another 10mm self-tapping screw. Place the remaining roof panel on top of the shed, sliding it so the lips are on the outside. Make sure you've got the correct edge of the roof panel sliding into the ridge beam. Pull the edge of the roof panel and slide it into the ridge beam. Make sure the holes in the ridge beam align with the holes in the roof panel channel. Fasten the ridge beam and roof panel with four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Fasten the roof sheets together using four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Secure the corners of the roof to the shed using four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Secure the length of the roof panel to the rear panel using four of the 10 mil self-tapping screws. Repeat for the front of the shed, securing the roof and front panel using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Moving to the side of the shed, use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to further secure the first lip to the wall. Leave the last hole in the lip empty as we'll finish with the gable cap later. Use five of the 10 mm self-tapping screws to secure the next lip. Make sure to leave the hole closest to the center of the side wall free.
Repeat this for the lip on the other side of the shed. Fasten to the side wall using 9 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out and fasten both ends of the ridge beam to the peak brace using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the gable caps and fold as shown. Hook the bottom of the gable caps up under the two roof panels and then place over the ridge beam. Drill out through the holes in the gable cap and then fasten with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use two more of the 10mm self-tapping screws to finish securing the lips to the side panel. Attach the remaining gable cap to the other side. Drill out the holes, then secure the cap and lips with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Place the hasp over the pad belt shaft. Drill out both holes and secure with two 10mm self-tapping screws. Firstly position the shed onto the slab, making sure the walls are squared up and centred. Take your angle brackets and lay them out in the positions as shown, spacing them equally along each wall. Using these brackets as a template, go around and carefully mark where the holes are on the slab and on the wall. Drill 3mm pilot holes in the wall centred on these marks. Now switch out to the 10mm drill bit and drill through these pilot holes. Next, take your hammer drill and insert the 10mm masonry drill bit. Drill down through the marks we made earlier. Be sure to go down deep enough for the height of the diner bolt. From the outside of the shed, take the 10mm bolt and poke it inside. You may need a friend to hold it there. Align the angle bracket with the bolt and then tighten the nut by hand. Tighten it further using the shifting spanner. Put the diner bolt through the bracket and into the hole in the slab. Tighten this nut on the diner bolt with a shifting spanner. Now that this has been done at all positions, the structure is anchored. Any leftover holes can be finished off with a screw.